If you love classic cars, then Donald loves you. Anyone who knows me knows that I have a particular weakness for Italian machines. Cars, boats, whatever they might be, and certainly motorcycles. And obviously, almost everybody knows the name Ducati when it comes to motorcycles. And some people, certainly many of the people watching this, know Moto Guzzi, but not as many people. And Richard, this is your 1969 Moto Guzzi, and this is a spectacular vehicle. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, thank you, Donald. Uh, as you say, many people know Ducati. Ducati started in 1948, but Moto Guzzi started in 1921. Uh, and for many years, they built single cylinder bikes. We have a beautiful C C2V also on show here. Uh, and they were known for their 250 and 350 and 500 cc singles. But in the mid 60s, they were looking at the Italian police market and they developed a V-twin. And their V7, as it was called, was a 700 cc V-twin, very popular with the Italian police. Uh, and they did extremely well. They sold a few of them in the US but really, really didn't have quite the success that they hoped for. And their distributor realized that this was because the bike wasn't powerful enough. The uh, V7 was about 50 horsepower. And who were their competition at that point in the US? Harley market? Davidson. They owned the police market. And most police forces had a limit of 55, minimum limit of 55 horsepower. So the Guzzi just didn't quite make the cut. So they got them to re-engineer, the factory re-engineered the V7 and produced the 757cc Ambassador. And this is an example of that. The Ambassador produced 60 horsepower, which is actually a pretty good rating back in the day. BMW's R69S, which is their sporting twin, is 42 horsepower. So 60, okay, Italian horses, perhaps a little, <laughs> a little exaggerated, but 60 horsepower was a great output. And they sold these tens of thousands to police forces, particularly on the West Coast. One of Moto Guzzi's features for their twin is the V-twin arrangement. And this motor was originally built or originally designed for a wartime three-wheel tractor. So if it looks a little agricultural or a little bit like a car engine or something you'd find in yard equipment, it is. That's why. Well, Richard, I have, I have a problem mm. looking at any Italian castings and calling them agricultural in any way, shape, or form because <laughs> I just think that they're such incredible works of art. Also, isn't there a practical application for having a V-twin like this because you get natural cooling as you ride? Absolutely. You get perfect primary balance with a 90-degree V-twin. Uh, but you also have good ground clearance. The flat twin BMW, of course, has the cylinders much lower to the ground. Uh, this allows protection for the rider's knees and you get good cooling. And so how long have you owned this, this motorcycle? I've had this one for about six years. Uh, it's completely unrestored. Uh, it, all, all the parts, all the paint, everything is, is original. Perhaps the seat cover was changed some years ago, but everything else is original. It still has its dealer decal from Ghost Motorcycles in New York. It still has its 1969 inspection sticker on the fork leg. And I've ridden it quite a lot. It's done about 22,000 miles. Which is absolutely fantastic. You know, one of the things that's so interesting to me is, again, the life that vehicles lead. And we see, especially today, as motorcycles have become intensely collectible, these unridden motorcycles. You know, oh, this motorcycle with 1,000 miles or 2,000 mm. miles or, or 8 miles. And to me, a motorcycle like this tells the story, the wonderful, the, the way the, the hand-painted uh, striping is just lovingly rubbed away where the, where the tank has been polished and things like that, and the enjoyment of the ride. So, you know, what is your opinion about that? The fact that, you know, there are these motorcycles that are completely unused. Well, both are important. It's wonderful to see something with one mile or a thousand miles. That way you can see exactly what it was like. But you can only really experience a bike by riding it. And if you don't ride it, there's no real point. It's like having a bottle of rare wine that you never taste. Um, and fortunately, the Moto Guzzi is not so rare that you would worry about it. There's mm. still plenty of these left. 
There's probably not too many left with their original paint and features of this age, but they're not so precious that you can't ride it. And they're fun to ride. I've ridden this in all weathers. I've been caught out in thunderstorms and got soaked to the skin riding it. It's, it's a fun bike. And where from here did Motoguchi go in the 19, later in the 1970s and 80s? Well, they continued very much with the same frame, uh, sorry, the same engine. Uh, the V-twin, almost unchanged, they put into a later lower frame. This is a little heavy. They call these the loop frame. They moved on to the Tonti frame, named after the designer, Leo Tonti. And they produced higher performance sports bikes like the Moto Guzzi Le Mans. Uh, and they also went on and produced the V7 Sport and other famous uh, V-twins. They still use the same arrangement today. Uh, almost unchanged. Many parts have changed, but they still use, they still build a 750cc twin and they build a 1200 twin. So they've, they've kept on the V twin throughout their, uh, the last 50 years. One of the things that we discussed uh, the other day is the fact that among motorcycle collectors, and typically motorcycle collectors have two, three, 10, 15 uh, motorcycles, another great advantage over collecting cars where, mm. you know, you can't have 15 cars and, and not have the storage for them. But you say that it's almost certain that if a person owns a number of collectible bikes, they almost always have Moto Guzzi in their collection. Why is that, do you think? I think they just have a lot of character. Um, they're easy to work on if you like to fix and repair and service things yourself. Um, they have a very distinctive feel when you ride them. Uh, and, and they're also a little bit unusual, a little bit rare. So I think all of those things uh, uh, come together and many of my riding friends all own Moto Guzzi's. I mentioned Moto Guzzi was founded in 1921 and that means this year they turn 100 years old and on 15th of March that's their 100th anniversary. So I imagine the museum will be putting on a very special event for that day. We're planning a cake. At the least. Balloons. Thanks, Richard. You're welcome.